everyone. Welcome to my channel, Budget for Success. Woo! And you know what time it is. It's Smart Money Tuesday, my favorite time of the week. Woo! Woo! Smart Money Tuesday. Oh, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Onyx Jones, and I have had over 25 years experience balancing budgets and working for various government agencies. I've balanced budgets of millions of dollars, and I recently sat on an investment board for a retirement agency, and I made decisions worth billions of dollars. So I've seen a whole lot in my career, and I'm just excited that I want to share what information I've learned and gathered along the way to help you reach financial freedom. Reach that goal that you have, that desire that you have. I'm here to cheer you on. So tune in every Tuesday. And if you missed some of my previous videos, go look for my playlist, Smart Money Tuesday, and have fun <laughs> and grab a notepad and take notes. So today we're going to talk about mm, a good topic. You've acquired wealth. You're a millionaire. Now what? <laughs> so uh, let's get started. Show woo. <laughs> there we go. Smart Money Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. And the name of my channel is Budget for Success. All right, let's see. What are we talking about today? So the items that are on the list for our agenda are how to regulate your mindset <laughs> and avoid that lifestyle creep, right? You're a millionaire. Now, what do you do to keep, how do you stay a millionaire? How do you prosper? How do you further your, your prosperity? And if you're not a millionaire and you're a thousandaire, that's okay too. I got a word for you as well. This message is for anyone that's listening to this video that has a desire to not only grow, but maintain their wealth. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about financial planning and diversification. We're going to talk about how to mitigate risk, because if you have assets, you want to hold on to them because you're trying to grow them. You're not trying to lose them. So I'm going to give you some ideas about how to mitigate risk how to do regular check-ins so you can stay on top of your finances and how to invest in continuous learning. All right, so here we go. The first topic is how to regulate your mindset. Listen, you have to understand the mindset that you may have used to get you where you are today, where you were on the grind and the hustle and you were building and creating and expanding, whatever level of wealth that you are at today, the mindset that you used to get there was really focused on acquiring the wealth. But what about when you're ready to maintain the wealth? Because how many of you were similar to me that you hit a, 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 a place in your life where you were like, how do I hold on to it? I don't want to ever go back to being broke again. How do I stay focused? How do I keep prospering? How do I stay in the right mindset that I never go back to where I was when I was pinching pennies and trying to make ends meet and looking for help along the way and really, you know, desperate, you know, how do I stay out of that place? So I'm here to tell you that the most important thing that you do, because I can tell you a lot of things you can do physically, things you can do with your budget and people you can go see and, and, and investments you can make. But the most important thing is that you regulate your mindset. You really have to normalize your wealth. So whatever you have, it should feel normal. And you go, well, what's normal? OK, when you wake up in the morning and you go put your feet on the ground so you could get up and go get dressed or go to the restroom, you know the floor is going to be there, right? You get up, you put your feet down. There's no like, is the floor there today? Is the floor gone there? Oh, is it, is it OK? Is it hot? Is it warm? Is it mushy? No, you know that the floor that you step on and you walk on every day, when you wake up in the morning, you know it's there. That's how you have to normalize your wealth. Whatever level of wealth you have, it has to feel comfortable for you. It has to be something you expect. It has to be something that's just there, right? You feel good. You feel easy about it. 
there's no stress like, oh gosh, because the more you stress, the more things pop up that require your resources. This emergency pops up, this thing pops up and you go, man, I can never get ahead. That's your lizard brain talking to you. Your lizard brain is constantly making you feel like you've got to scrap and scrap and scrap and scrap to get to the next level. And you could have millions of dollars, but you're still worried about making sure you can get to the next level and hoping that it doesn't all poof, go away. So we're going to control our emotions we're going to shut the lizard brain up because the lizard brain goes wah, 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 all the time. You're going to shut the lizard brain up and you're going to eliminate <laughs> conversations of, with, the, with negative people. OK, I've just put it out there. Avoid conversations with negative people, especially conversations about your wealth. They go, oh, the market's going to ready to go down. So what? The market's going to go down. That means invest. <laughs> 2020, when the market went down, I told y'all I poured a lot of money into the stock market and I did well. So stop worrying about things that haven't even happened, things that are in the future, and spend your money intentionally. Yes, now that you have all this wealth that you've acquired, don't go do that lifestyle creep up where, oh, I got to have this, you know, have to have vault. Okay, spend your money intentionally. And more importantly, you really need to know your worth, know your value. You have invested time and energy to get to this place that you're at financially. And although you plan on going further into that prosperity and wealth, but I'm here to tell you that you have to really acknowledge the effort, the, the time, the energy that you spent, whether you did it on a job and you saved and accumulated wealth, whether you did it through investments, whether you had your own business, value the energy and the you who created that. Make you important, value you, know your worth and have the expectation that you will uh, continue to accumulate the wealth that you have. So most important is to have your mindset put in check. But tip number two, we must diversify. Oh, I can hear it. I'm just here to tell you, I sat on a retirement board and all oh, the whole conversation was asset allocation, asset allocation. How are you diversifying your investments? Okay, not just your investments that you connect with a financial planner on, which could be investments in stocks, government bonds, corporate bonds. There's investments in foreign markets. You need to talk to your financial planner and tell them, I want to look into emerging markets. What is that? Make them explain emerging markets to you. Get online and research it. Look at ETFs, mutual funds. Find out more information and connect with a financial planner and ask them these questions so that they can create a balanced mixed portfolio. So you have a little bit of money over here and a little bit of money over here and a little bit of money over there. Also, real estate, if you don't want to personally invest in real estate, like a rental property, you can invest in what's called REITs. So you need to talk to your financial planner about that. But you do want to have some money in various pieces of the puzzle. Diversification minimizes your risk. It also can enhance your returns because if one area of the market is doing well, you're taking advantage of that. And if times change and a different segment of the areas do, of the market is doing well, then you take advantage of that. There was a time where go government bonds would just get you one to two percent, and all of a sudden, ba boom, government bonds could get you four percent return. <laughs> so you know, hey, play the market through your financial planner and tell them, I want to make sure my investment portfolio is diversified. They can really give you some vi valuable guidance and create a financial plan for you. Now, real estate, if you can't afford to purchase a property, have you thought about going into business with a friend or a relative and you can purchase investment property together? Maybe you turn it into an Airbnb because that's the new thing out now. You don't even have to rent the property necessarily, but you can um, have several people coming through there um, paying money through Airbnb and then you can have a property management company manage the property. You don't even have to be there. But these are things that you can explore. These are things that you should be investigating and looking into. Because why? Because our mindset is focused on prosperity 
only, okay? We're not worried about, oh, but I could lose money. Yeah, you could, or you could gain money. So tell the lizard brain to shut up and start focusing on ways that you feel comfortable making money, okay? There's an investment that's out there that's right for you and you just need to find it, okay? And also want to make sure you're aware that you need to keep multiple sources of income. Don't rely on one source. If you have a job, that's great. But come on, let's look at some other areas, not just money that's in a savings account and you're getting interest. Now, every money source of revenue is important. So yes, that savings account that's generating income, interest income is wonderful, great. But let's come up with a side hustle. What's something you love to do, but you can now make money doing it? Okay, create some extra form of income that you can then invest into stocks, invest into real estate. Let's get creative. Think outside of the box. Take the limits off. Get, tell that lizard brain to shut up that says you can't do it. You can do it. Others are doing it all around you. Why do you think that you're limited, more limited to those opportunities than they are? That's a story you have told yourself for years and you've kept yourself small. And I'm here to tell you, it's time to branch out, expand and grow. So develop multiple revenue sources from various areas, side hustles, jobs, uh, additional jobs, one job, two jobs. And then that second job, if you save all that money for before you know it, that money will start working for you because then you can put it into investments. Also must consider passive income. How can you earn money passively? Passive income is fantastic because that means you don't have to do a lot of work. There are different businesses that you can set up online and you could put maybe five to 10 hours a week into it. But other than that, it's just generating income. And I don't care if it's only $5 a month, $6 a month. That's money that you didn't have before. And if you put it into investments, it will now be working for you. It will be your employee. It will be generating income for you. I don't care. $20. Put that $20 to work. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. All right, that's tip number two, but now let's move on to tip number three. You're working hard. She works hard for the money. Mm, mm, so hard for the money. Oh, I digress. Okay, you're working hard to earn your money. So let's mitigate our risk, okay? So what do you mean by that, Onyx? First of all, I just want to share with you, there's lots of insurance policies out there. So you will need to talk to someone who is an insurance agent so you can get the right insurance. But there are things that happen that are unexpected. So such as illness, right? Or disability or property damage, et cetera, et cetera. You want to make sure you have the right insurance so that if something happens, you can take care of it. Get the right insurance and release it and let it go. No longer worry about what if, what if this happens? What if that happens? You have the insurance, you're fine. Relax, move on, focus on generating more wealth. And you will find that those unexpected things happen less and less because you're not worried about them because you're properly insured and you have what it takes that if something does come up, you can just keep moving. It really does give you a peace of mind. The other thing is to get the right trust attorney. Get the right trust attorney. Don't build this wealth for your entire lifetime and then it doesn't get distributed the way you want it to be distributed or your family who's already mourning your loss has to go through probate. Get a trust attorney and get your assets and protect them, put them in a trust. And that way you can control those assets, you can protect those assets, and you get to determine who and when and how your assets are going to be distributed to, okay? So I'm not a trust attorney, but I'm just telling you, you need to go talk to a trust attorney, all right? Okay, do that for me because we're not building this wealth and then losing it. We're building this wealth and we're building more wealth and we're focusing on moving forward. We're going to put some insurance measures in place. We're going to get a trust attorney in place and then we're going to keep moving and building our wealth. All right. Now, tip number four, let's do some regular financial check-ins. Yes, yes, yes. I promise you, I have seen people who have lots and lots and lots of money 
And I've worked with companies that have lots and lots of money. And guess what? Every month they want to know how much money they have. They want to know their net worth. They want to know what, how much money they made, how much money they spent. They want to know everything. And so as an individual, it is important for us to do a check-in. What is our net worth? Go through the exercise of looking at what is your house worth now or houses, what are they worth? How much money do you have in your investments this month? Call your financial advisor, say, hey, it's time to do a check-in. I want to know how well we did this month. I also want you to stay informed of economic trends because there are certain things that occur that will help you make wise decisions if you are aware. So be aware what's going on in the market. If you have investments in certain stocks and you see trends happening and moving in one direction or the other, that'll tell you whether you should invest more or whether you should pull back, whether you should hold your money or whether it's time to get out. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. That's right. You got to know when to run. Are you always going to get it right? No, I didn't. I ran from Tesla. <laughs> Well, that was a mistake, <laughs> but that's okay. That was money that I, you know, I was, I didn't make. Okay. But I did make some money on some other stocks, right? So you're not going to always get it perfectly right, but you want to be informed and educated about what you're doing. Okay. So make informed decisions about your business, talk to financial advisors, do research. But the most important thing is you have to care about your wealth. You have to know your value. Whatever is valuable to you, you protect it. You research it. You look into it. You don't do hands off, but you get involved. You get emotionally connected to those things that you value. So I need you to value your worth. And then finally, tip number five, invest in continuous learning. You guys that follow my channel know I cashed up an envelope called Mastermind. That money is so that I can continually invest in online programs, workshops. I'll see a webinar or there's a conference to go to, et cetera, et cetera, because I don't know it all and I always need to learn more. I'm always striving to get more information, to learn more. I stay with my head out there connecting with people, networking, getting more information, learning every day, because this is, this is something that I value and I care about. I want to learn more about. Stop being passive about your funds and stop complaining what's not there that you want to create and manifest. Start researching ways that you can manifest it and grow it. There's always new opportunities out there. Sometimes it just takes you to do some research, talk to some people, network with some people, hear about some things, and, and, and then take action. Or not take action because after you did your research, you found that wasn't for you. But the fact is you did the research. So please invest in continuous learning. And invest does not always mean financially investing, but also it just means investing time because it takes time to research things, takes time to read about stuff. And if you want to invest in some wealth coaching, my information is on the screen. So feel free to reach out to me by email and I will send you a link so we can do a 30 minute free consultation and we can talk about what your goals are and desires are and whether I'm a good fit to help you to get to those goals. All right. I am excited about this series. I hope you're tuning in every Tuesday because each time I'm bringing just a bigger nugget and a bigger nugget. And then sometimes I go deep into a particular topic because I really want you to explore it at a deeper level. So tune in and find out what we're going to talk about next Tuesday. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I've had a blast. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to Budget for Success. Bye for now. Love you guys.